Hello and welcome to an updated 1 to 99 and 120 thieving guide for 2023. Whenever you're ready, grab your cup of tea, sit back, relax, and enjoy. Here's a list of useful XP boosts you can use to increase your experience per hour and therefore reduce the amount of time you need to take to level 99 or 120 thieving. Here's a list of useful items that can increase experience, AFKness, or provide other quality of life buffs. As players usually skip this information or look up extra details on the wiki, I'm going to keep it short, although when relevant, I will bring up which buffs are important for a method. I'll be sure to add some key wiki links to the description of this video. Let's get into the thieving training. While there are many quests that give thieving experience, these are the quests you absolutely need to complete if you are following this guide. After completing all of these quests, you'll be unlocking an essential leveling method called safe cracking, which you're going to be using from the mid to high levels. If for whatever reason you're not able to complete the Hazel Cult quest, train thieving until level 5 at Pompous Merchants located near the Taverly Lodestone. You can click and thieve away until you're caught, stunned, and then after a second or two you'll be able to continue thieving by clicking again. The next stage of your thieving journey will be to steal from bakery stalls until level 15. This method will give you approximately 10,000 experience per hour plus, and all you need to do is continue to click on this bakery stall which can be found at the Lumbridge Market. If you're caught by the guard, simply try to kill the guard or lure it away. If you're caught by any of the NPCs, simply move around the cart to continue thieving. Starting from level 15, and yes, this requires the Buyers and Sellers quest I mentioned earlier, you will start to open the Northern Doors inside the Thieving Guild. You're going to be hopping a lot of worlds for this method, in fact, you're going to be hopping every three doors, so you're going to want to turn off the Hop World confirmation screen. This will allow you to simply press escape, click on hop worlds, and then click a random world to instantly hop to it. This method of opening doors is incredibly fast thieving experience per hour, and you'll be able to gain around 50 to 60,000 XP per hour, if not more when using XP boost. The high experience rate will cause you to fly through your levels, although you're going to want to stop at level 30 thieving to complete a quest. At level 30 thieving, complete the The Feud quest to go from level 30 to 37 thieving, and unlock two saves for future training methods. For the next part of this quest, I suggest you borrow yourself a lockpick from the Grand Exchange. Now, you can also get one from the Thieving Guild store, but that requires the Lost Her Marbles quest, which requires level 41 thieving. You can also find one in the Anil Agility Dungeon, but that will require level 57 agility. That lockpick is a requirement to open the Southern Jail Doors, at which you're going to continue your thieving training until level 62, unless you want to do the alternative method. Opening the North and South Doors and Hopping Worlds can get you over 150,000 thieving experience per hour. It's possible to get more thieving experience per hour by luring the caching volunteers to this room, closing the door, then luring them, knocking them out, and then looting them a couple of times. Before you can do this method, you're going to need to have the rubber blackjack, which you can buy from the same shop as the lockpick at level 41 thieving. While doing this, you're going to want to hold down your spacebar for the luring part because you're going to need to go through the dialogue, then knock them out, and then you'll be able to loot them. This is incredibly click intensive, but can net you over 200,000 thieving experience per hour if done correctly. Now, there are some other methods to do, even new ones such as these Ecal Druids, but your success rate is so low that even when you're doing these at level 60 thieving using Gloves of Silence and a Tier 1 Aura, it's just not worth your time. If you want a suggestion, I would stick with those Jill Doors until level 62 thieving because it's easier, less click intensive, and not as annoying. At level 62, you can unlock safe cracking as long as you've completed these quests, ending with a guild of your own. Speak to the safe cracking trainer to get a stethoscope and a small loot bag. You can now start safe cracking. Safes are located around RuneScape and can be cracked for constant low XP with big XP drops in between for every dialogue and eventually a big XP drop after fully unlocking it. This process is very AFK but can, if you'd like, be sped up by clicking the safe if it flashes blue. Although in this guide I'm going to assume that you're AFKing all the safes. Now every time you successfully crack a safe your loot bag will fill up a bit and you have a chance of getting items. You can empty your loot bag at the chief inside the thieves guild for more thieving XP and you can hand in your items for either coins or a currency called pilfer points. At the start of your journey, always trade the items for extra pilfer points as you're going to be using those to upgrade the size of your loot bag amongst other things to reduce the amount of emptying trips. From level 62 to 69, you're going to be taking the following route starting from the Lumbridge Lodestone. 
Start with a safe inside Bob's house on the first floor south of the lodestone. After you've successfully cracked that safe, teleport back to the Lummage lodestone or walk back and then go to the house to the north, go up the stairs, enter the door and then crack the safe on the first floor. The next safe is located on the first floor of the Edgeville General Store which you can get to by using your Wilderness Sword 1 if you've completed the easy Wilderness tasks or just simply use the Edgeville Lodestone. After you've cracked this safe we're going to be cracking two safes inside the Draenor Manor so teleport to the Draenor Lodestone head north and go inside. As you might notice we're using a lot of Lodestone teleports so using Vizwax for quick charges is highly recommended. After you've cracked both safes inside this room teleport back to the Draenor Lodestone and head south into Draenor. Head to the wise old man's house, go up the stairs to the first floor and crack the safe you find there. After this safe, we have two more safes located just below the top level of the wizard's tower. To get there quickly, use your wicked hood teleport to the runecrafting guild and descend one level. Alternatively, you can use a traveler's necklace, go to the top of the tower, descend one level and have the same effect, or simply walk there from the Draenor lodestone. If you've lost your wicked hood, you can reclaim it by speaking to Tam McGrubber inside Burthor. After cracking one safe, head towards the other side and crack the other safe. After this safe, you'll repeat the journey starting from Lumbridge unless you're already level 65 thieving. In that case, bring a lockpick and crack the three, yes, three saves at the top of the Varrock Castle. You can get to the castle quickly by using the Varrock Teleport spell or a Varrock Teleport tab. The reason you need a lockpick is to pick the treasury door before you can get inside to crack the three saves. After you've done all three, simply repeat the run starting from Lumbridge. The route from level 69 to 76 starts in Alcarid. Teleport to the lodestone and go inside the building a few tiles to the north of it to find your first safe. After cracking that safe, head west from the lodestone, go up the stairs and find your second safe on the first floor of this building. Next, we're going to go to two safes in Polnavich, which you can get to quite easily by using a Polnavich teleport item. If you don't have these or you're not able to buy them on the Grand Exchange, you can also use a Slayer Ring to teleport to Simona to get there as well. If you have neither, you can teleport to the Bandit Camp Lodestone and then walk east, although remember that that Lodestone requires the Desert Treasure Quest to be complete. Next, we're going to be doing two saves inside Menafos, which you can get to by using the Menafos Lodestone. This requires the Jack of Spades quest, which I'm going to assume you've already completed. One of the saves is found on the eastern side of the Merchant District, which I recommend you go to first, and the other is found on the western side, right next to the Workers District. The odds that your saves inside Al Karid are still recharging are very real, so to end up the run before restarting at Al Karid, you're going to use the teleport to Varonk spell and do three saves at the top of the Varrock Castle. As a reminder, you need a lockpick to open the door before you can access the saves. The route from level 76 to 83 starts in Port Sarim. Teleport to the Port Sam Lodestone and head north to the jewelry store. Go up to the first floor to find your first safe. After you've done that safe, go back down, head into the Battle Axe store in Port Sarum, go up to the first floor to find your second safe. After that one's open, teleport to the Burthorpe Lodestone and go north inside the castle. Find your way to the top and in the middle you'll find two juicy safes. After you've unlocked those two safes, we're going to crack three to four safes inside Falador. The way of getting there will determine which safes you will crack. There's multiple ways of getting to Falador other than the Lodestone and Teleport spell. For example, you can use the PVM Hub Teleport, attune your portal to the Giant Mole and go straight for the one near the Garden. After you've cracked that save, head back out of the Garden and go to this building and go to the first floor. You'll find your second save there. After that, you're going to crack one more safe in the building towards the east on the second floor as seen before you can restart your run. If you have a Horde Stalker Ring or the 99 Dungeoneering Cape, you can also choose to do the fourth safe in Falador by teleporting to the Hidden Mine, go up the ladder, going inside the building, and going up to the first floor for another safe. And as a final note, if you've completed the Death of Chivalry quest, you can also easily gain access to two more saves by using your Skull Remembrance Teleport to the Black Knight's Fortress. The route from levels 83 to 90 is quite a simple one. Start your route at the Yenil Lodestone and go inside the wall to find your first save. After having cracked that save, head towards the Yenil Bar, go up the ladder to the first floor and there you'll find your second save. 
Next, use the Teleport to Camelot spell or the Sears Village Lodestone, head towards the Camelot Castle and crack the two safes inside. After you've cracked both safes, teleport to Ardoin using the Tele Ardoin spell and go inside this building to the west. After having cracked that safe, go back down and head towards the building on the northern side of the Ardoin market for the final safe of this run before repeating the entire run. If you're not able to use the Teliar Doring spell, there's probably a good chance that you haven't activated the scroll you get at the end of the Plague City quest. Go back to Edmund, speak to him, talk to him about the scroll, then click on it to activate it. The route from levels 90 to 94 is going to be a bit of a weird one due to a fairly recent change to Wilderness Saves. Instead of taking 5 minutes to recharge, these saves now take 10 minutes. So you're always going to want to start off your run with the 3 Wilderness Saves located in the Rogue's Castle. An easy way of getting here is by using a portable obelisk or obelisk shards which you can get from wilderness flash events or buying the grand exchange. These items allow you to use the wilderness obelisk teleportation system remotely and if you've completed the hard wilderness achievements, you can simply choose where you teleport to, which would be the level 50 teleporter. If you haven't completed those achievements, you're just going to be teleporting around for a couple of times until you actually get there. Another change worth mentioning is that you're able to teleport out of the wilderness instantly no matter how deep you are nowadays, unless you have PvP turned on. Turn off PvP at the Vala NPC located in Edgeville. The next two states will be found in two houses located on the eastern side of Xenaris, which will require the Lost City quest, which I'm sure you've completed by now. It's worth noting that one of these saves actually requires level 94 save cracking, but because you're going to be using this area for future routes, I'd like to mention it anyway. One of the fastest ways of getting there is using a Slayer Cape teleport to Shilder and then walking east. Another way of getting there is by using the skill portals in the Max Garden, which doesn't actually require you to be maxed, but does require the Elf City to be unlocked, which you can also use remotely from your Grace of the Elves. If you don't have these two teleportation options, you can also use a Wicked Hood and teleport to the Cosmic Altar and then go northeast. And if for whatever reason you have none of these options, you can always use the Hut in the Lumbered Swamp or holding a Draymond or Lunar Staff to go inside as well. If you've completed Fairy Tale Part 3, you will not need to bring along a staff, and you can just use the ring. Now, due to you not having access to many saves inside the Zemarico Fortress, which I'll be covering in the next leveling section, I suggest teleporting to Camelot and doing the two lower tier saves there. After that, you're going to go to the Anil Lodestone and crack the two saves there to finish your run. At which point, you can simply teleport back to the Rogue's Castle by using your portable obelisk or obelisk shards and then restart the entire process. It's worth noting that if you haven't completed the Ritual of the Majorat quest, this is going to be the exact same route you use until level 99 thieving. The highest level safe cracking route is going to be similar to the level 90 to 94 route. You're going to start at the Rogue's Castle on the Deep Wilderness to crack the three safes inside. A fast way of getting here is by using a portable obelisk or obelisk shards both obtained from wilderness flash events or bought at the Grand Exchange. The next set of saves you're going to go to will require the Ritual of the Marjorat quest to be complete and the Dishonor Amongst Thieves quest. An incredibly fast way of getting to the fortress is to use a portable fairy ring although that requires level 94 invention. Either way, you're going to want to use a fairy ring teleport to the code D. KQ to teleport to the Glacial Cave. Other fast ways of getting to the Fairy Ring include using the Slayer Cape teleport to Sheldar, using a Tokolzo to the Fight Caves and then right clicking the Fairy Ring and choosing your destination, or teleporting to the Anil Lodestone heading north and using the Fairy Ring there. Once arrived, exit the cave to the north and head immediately west once inside the snowy area. Go inside the fortress and start cracking the saves as seen. Now these saves have different requirements ranging from level 90 to 92 to 94 and finally level 96 thieving. Assuming you're level 94 while watching this part, you'll be able to crack three of the four safes. If you want to crack all four safes despite being level 94 thieving, you can bring along an abyssal lurker pouch with scrolls to boost your thieving level by four. After cracking all four safes inside the fort, you're going to teleport back to Zanaris, for example, by using the Slayer Cape teleport to Sheldar, and then crack the two safes inside the eastern part of the zone. After you've done the two saves inside Zanaris, assuming you're fully AFKing that is, the wilderness saves will start to recharge, at which point you can repeat the entire run. This method is over 500,000 thieving experience per hour fully AFK, not assuming the extra experience you gain from emptying your loot bag inside the Thieves Guild. An alternative way to train thieving is to pickpocket Crux Econ Knight starting at level 83 thieving located in the Garden of Karid. 
While these knights do only require level 83 thieving, I can only recommend you do these if you have at least a portion of the buffs I'm listing on screen now, as they have a very high thieving failure rate otherwise. If you have all of these buffs, including the legendary five finger discount aura, you'll have no issues AFKing these for over 800,000 experience per hour. Personally, I got around 770,000 experience per hour using all of the buffs highlighted in green now on this list. Once I dropped my legendary five finger discount aura, I lost around 15% success rate, reducing my experience per hour to around 530,000 XP per hour. If you haven't completed the Light Within quest to gain access to the Lightform Prayer and the Crystal Mask spell, I would not suggest doing these whatsoever and just sticking to regular safe cracking. At level 96, you can also do Priv Elf Thieving. That is, if you've completed the Plague's End quest to gain access to the area. The elves from each clan give you different loot and experience, which gets better the higher level of clan you thieve. XP per hour and AFKness will highly depend on your own boosts, but you can expect around 250 to 350k XP per hour. After you've been caught three times by a specific clan, they will banish you for 20 minutes, at which point you would teleport to another clan by using your crystal teleport seed or simply walk there. One way of thieving one clan consistently is to use elf thieving reset tokens bought using pilfer points from Dodgy Derek shop in the Thieves Guild. At the top end, if you were to farm a single clan and use those reset tokens, you would be able to get nearly 500,000 thieving experience per hour. Though at that point, you might as well be doing Crux Eco Knights because they are better experience per hour. As I mentioned, I did assume Dwarf Traders would still be good experience at levels 90 plus using almost every thieving boost in the game, but even after luring the guards behind the door, they just kept respawning every 5 minutes, so I cannot recommend this training method to anyone in 2023. Just stick to Crux Eco Knights. Perhaps something changed. I don't know. If you have level 99 thieving, you can also choose to fully AFK bandits west of the bandit camp lodestone. These can be fully AFK using a camo outfit, sticky fingers relic, and five finger discount aura. And of course, you're going to need to bring along your 99 thieving cape to note the lock picks and anti poison they drop. These aren't the best method by any means, but they're very easy to AFK. The final method worth mentioning are using thieving skilling dummies, which can be incredible experience. At level 99, these things can get you over 1.8 million base thieving experience per hour, fully AFK, assuming you have a bunch of these saved up. Due to the limited availability of these dummies, I suggest you save these up for a double XP event, which happens at least four times per year. I hope this guide helped you in your journey, and if it did, leave a like down below and maybe even consider subscribing. Catch you guys in the next one. Peace.